Hey everyone, I'm Jen Marshall, co-founder and executive director of This Is My Brave, and I am so excited to be joined by This Is My Brave alum, Danielle Ferentino. And Danielle, we are going to jump right into this conversation, and we're talking about Brave Beyond the Stage. We're talking about, this is our opportunity to talk with you about what it was like to tell your story from the Brave stage, um, and also where life has taken you now. And, and one more thing, and then I want to share with everyone um, more about your podcast, because I want you to promote that at the end. So thank you. So give much. us your intro first. Oh, wow. Um, so I am Miss Danielle, formerly Danny Starr. Um, I did media for 15 years, and I am a mother of two amazing kids, ages six and nine. They're about to switch over. It's so quick always. Yes, Um, this time of year mine are too. Yes, I'm an educator and I am, uh, this is my Brave alum and I'm so happy to be here, Jen. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for taking the time because I know how busy you are right now with back to school and and I want to hear about how that whole transition happened for you after, you know, your, your time on our stage. But even before that, so God, I am having a hard time remembering you it's worked been years. With, yes. It's been a number of years and you worked at this is my brave for a short time. So yes. w- did that come before or after your time on stage? I can't remember both. Actually, it, uh, I did one before I worked there, then I worked and then I did an, another one afterwards. So I, it was actually a whole thing. Like I consistently, I rewatched the Bethesda perf- presentation you gave. Oh my gosh, my heart. I just, so fill everyone in on, um, that experience in particular, where you talked about postpartum depression and Mm -hmm. postpartum anxiety. Yeah. Um, so my connection to this is my brave in general is because I, uh, experienced postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety, and it was absolutely life altering in a sense of like, just having to find a new normal, having to, when I think of like life defining turn points, right? On a, mm-hmm. If there was a map of my life, what are the big moments that would stand out? Mm-hmm. Legitimately postpartum, I, I, if it would be one of the biggest landmarks, yeah. um, <laughs> three times actually. So mm-hmm. um, when I got on the stage at the Bethesda show, for me, I think it, it felt like I was taking my power back, mm. right? I think the sick mind is a liar, but a very loud liar. And um, unfortunately, even when I got healthy, I believed some of those lies because when I was sick, they were so loud. Yes. So when, I, when I came out of it, I still remembered some of those things, even though so much of it was foggy. I still remembered a lot of the things I said to myself and told myself, and I had to heal from that experience. And I did, I didn't know how, and, um, the remedy was actually telling my story. Right. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we, we've always said like storytelling saves lives. That's like, we've always been people who knew that, right. For the, for the longest time, people always said, Oh, Danny or Danielle, you know, you're an overshare. And I used to feel embarrassment and, um, but it wasn't mine. It was other people's. It was like, they were putting this, these feelings mm-hmm. on yep. like, Oh, you overshare or you tell too much. And I genuinely felt like it was my God given gift. Like it I, is. I, thank you, Jen. Like I'm supposed to tell, like I, mm-hmm. I'm supposed to tell these stories. I'm supposed to do this. And I didn't fully understand that until I recognized how much power I got back mm-hmm. when I was on the, this is my brave stage because I was stripped of so many things during that time. Mm -hmm. What years were your experiences with with PPD and and postpartum anxiety? 2011, right after, well, Marley was born December 31st, 2011. And so right after that, so 2012, Mm -hmm. awful. Uh, 2014, awful. Mm -hmm. 2019 was my, my last bout with postpartum. And it's like important to note that I've had it three times and I have two living children. Mm -hmm. Right. So so thank you so much. Um, you know, I, even now, like thinking back to those times, 
I am the most grounded, healthiest. Oh, Jen, I'm gonna get emotional today. Mm, oh, no. It's okay. okay. Get it together, girl. Okay. I am so grounded. I I did not even understand that this was a possibility to feel mm. this this way. Mm-hmm. I I I I really truly mean that I didn't know this feeling was possible. And so this is easily the healthiest version of myself mentally. And I can't even understand how not even just me, but how like women have survived that. Mm-hmm. I can't. But I can tell you that after you come out of the fog, it's not as easy as just saying, oh, I went through that and now it's gone. Mm-hmm. Like, like anyone who's ever experienced postpartum. We need that connection of telling our stories and, and hearing yep. from other women. For me, it was postpartum psychosis after my first. And you said something in that Bethesda presentation um, that you gave when you said, I cannot begin to put into words how terrifying it is when your mind betrays you. And I related to that 1 million percent because it's happened to me five times. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you said something else about, uh, you know, there, there should be a special place in hell for women who, you know, harm their babies or, you know, and then we became those women who thought those things. Exactly. And the thing is, it's like, no, they were sick and they yep. needed treatment and we need better care and we need you know to recognize and look out for for our moms and um so that was just so so powerful and i loved how you own the stage when you first got up to the microphone and you told some stories about the girls that you know really got the audience laughing and sh- shared you were able to share with them how much you love your daughters of course and yeah. but that you went through this horrific time during your childbearing years yeah, it, what this is my brave is doing is so unbelievably incredible. Like I have been a part of a lot of different things in my life and you know that really played a part. I I could never be here in this space, this aligned, this grounded without that experience, Jen. Like mm. le- legitimately, like that was life-changing and I you know, tying it all back together. Like that was the the moment where, you know, I came out of postpartum multiple times and I, you feel like a different person. Mm -hmm. You're you're like, you don't even know how to, you don't know how to, you can't get back, but you also Mm -hmm. don't know where to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, what is this? This is, there's so much. I can't even, it's hard to even describe feeling this way. I like, it's hard to even go back, you know? Mm -hmm. But what I can say is, that being on that stage, I, it felt like I was telling my sick mind, like one, I was holding space for my sick mind, right? Because mm-hmm. that's still a part of who I am. Mm-hmm. I was holding space for my sick mind. I'm so sorry that you went through this. Mm. And, and like, I really like, you know, telling myself like, oh, like this was really horrible. And like, it's not your fault. No, it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. And showing myself love and standing in my truth, which was an awful truth. And it, and it hurt so bad, but I'm standing in it. I'm here mm-hmm. and I survived this and mm-hmm. we should talk about this. Like I need to tell this story, you know? And so it was just such a powerful, powerful experience. And one of the things I'll never forget is that my best friend, Claire actually was, she was not able to make it. So she said, <laughs> and she, I, as I was literally finishing, I looked up in the audience, um, I looked up to the audience and there she was just standing there. Love and like, it. I just locked eyes with her and I was like, oh my God, she's here. And like, you know, she lived through that with me. Mm. Right. And she's a nurse, um, practitioner. And so like, she knows this stuff. And I think, um, one thing also that I'll never, ever forget about any of the shows that I've ever watched or been a part of or anything like that is at some point, um, I think, I believe it's you, it is you who asked, like, you know, raise your hand if you've ever struggled with mental health or if you, you love someone mm-hmm. who um, struggles with mental health. And, oh, that, that, that was the moment, like, to see those hands and to, like, I instantly felt her arm mm-hmm. come around my shoulder and she just, like, squeezed me really tight. And I just remember being like, wow, like, this is such a safe space mm-hmm. for something that is so common taboo still how I don't know how but yes like a lot of people are still struggling talking about these things but 
you did this before it was trendy to talk about mental health. Like you really. Yeah. But it was people like you who've built it, who've come forward. And you just reminded me too. Uh, the second show you were in was the women's summit. Was that the, was that before? That, that was, was the first that, one. That was the first one was. Mm-hmm. That was really powerful. We had oh. six diverse women and then we had, um, oh my gosh, Elizabeth Vargas tell her story about yes. addiction. Those stories were so ha- haunting, mm-hmm. but also so powerful. Just mm-hmm. like, oh, I just remember being, not only like inspired, but saved. Like, I remember just feeling like, oh, what I've learned about myself and the extensive therapy that comes with all of this, right? (laughs) This trauma. Um, And what I've learned is that it is so important not to just quickly move through it, Mm -hmm. right? Oh my gosh. Yes. And if if you don't feel it, you, yep. If you don't feel it, you cannot heal from it. And so I think it was, okay, I'm going back to work. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. But I didn't understand how traumatic that experience was. Mm -hmm. And if you don't understand how traumatic the experience is, how can you heal from it? Right. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was slowing down and having that, that space. Mm -hmm. to really say, oh, this happened to me. I think so many people, you know, go through mental health challenges or or a crisis, right? Or a hospitalization. They're hit with it all of a sudden. Like that's how it happened to me. I think so many people don't realize that it's okay to kind of pause on life and to slow down. Process, exactly. Feel it, get get grounded, understand what you're dealing with to, to make a path forward to heal. Yeah. And I just think that that is such a good space for it. I think if people don't heal, um, I think if people don't heal, then we have a lot of hurt people walking around harming others. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, and the cycle continues and the cycle continues. And that's why so many people right now are committed to, um, unlearning the things that their parents Mm -hmm. taught them. And that's why so many people are committed to breaking generational curses because, you know, it was so, remember when, people laughed at people with mental health. Like, oh, you remember, gosh, yeah. like I, I literally think about, you know, in my mind, I, it's just not something that could ever happen in my world. And the people that I'm allowing my orbit know better. Like we mental health is not a joke, you know, like that's mm-hmm. not whatever. But I, I, I remember like comedies about people with mental health and like the way they spoke about people. And, and it's like, and you still even see it today. Yeah. As, like, as- it, it, shocking as it is, but because we are making strides, but Mm -hmm. we have a long way to go. Oh my God. Yes. We have a long way to go. And I just think like, these are, this is how we get there. Right. Mm -hmm. We tell, we tell our stories and, um, and like, you know, like we've said it a million times, Jen, and it's something that like in to my core, I believe it. And I will believe it until the day I die. Storytelling saves lives and, Mm -hmm. and everyone has a story. Mm-hmm. everyone has a story. everyone I, t- and- I said that when I talked to Carson Daly I yeah. said I think every person on this planet will deal with an issue with their mental health at some point in mm-hmm. their life I just I, I can't stand the statistic the common statistics that are cited one in five yeah. I, that's bull to me like well, I'm sorry yeah <laughs> it, it definitely is and think about it like let's just talk about the the trauma of 2020 from 2020 now yeah every single person in the world Mm-hmm. has experienced a major trauma mm-hmm. and every person in the world is absolutely not equipped social emotionally mm-hmm. to handle that trauma well or mm-hmm. safely. Yep. So it's very present. We are all going through this. We're being, we're, we're in this world, this world mm-hmm. that has so much pressure and, yeah. you know, there's so many different things. So, um, it's everywhere. Well, the good news is I'm seeing more and more like on my social media about uh, mental wellness and, you know, apps that help and, you know, products. And that's exciting to me, Mm -hmm. like seeing what is out there and what's coming up. Um, But also a lot of companies too, a lot of companies are really like becoming people first, Mm -hmm. people first, like your products are never going to be able to sell themselves. Is the people, if your people, people, if your people are like, what? Like, right. 
you're gonna need your people to be okay. And so it's like exactly. people first, we have to be people first and we have to be empathy-based. And if we're not people first and empathy-based, we are gonna have a lot more mental health problems in this country and in the world, like exactly. period. So Danielle, talk about your book for a moment because um, it's been out in the world for several years, right? Mm -hmm. It was released in 20, I wrote it in 2016, released in 2017. Uh, it's called Empathy and Eyebrows. And the, the subtitle is A Survivalist Stories on Reviving Your Spirit After Soul Crushing Shitstorms. And it's, <laughs> it's literally just short stories, tons of short stories from my life, mental health related, chronic illness related, um, being a black woman in this world and injustice and social justice and all these different things, but it is told um, through my own personal lens and that will give you a lot of hilarity and empathy and education um, as I put my educator hat on, um, but it's, it's told so, so tr truthfully from my perspective, right? Um, and I, I think it helps and, and it's so many stories and mm. if there's one thing I'm good at, I can tell you it's telling a story. So I poured my you heart are. into it. Thank you. I poured my heart into it and, um, I really hope that people read it and that it helps them because I love it. And then, you know, the, similarly with the podcast, mm -hmm. help a human out is the podcast. Um, and it's, it's a podcast where we tell stories and we ask questions and then other people tell their stories about, what the question is that's asked. And it's all centered around the title, help a human out, right? Um, and that's what we wanna do. We wanna help people. We want to be the people who are, Mr. Rogers, who is my fave, always said, look for the helpers. <laughs> yes. Um, and when I tell you, like, I love Fred Rogers because he was such a helper and, and I have that in my heart. It's like, look for the helpers. And what you're doing, Jen, is you're helping. And what every person who's ever gotten on a Tim stage, you know, mm -hmm. um, this is my brave stage, they're helpers. Mm -hmm. And so when the world has me, you know, really disheartened mm -hmm. and when I'm, when I'm not on solid ground, because just because I'm grounded and, and I've been the most in, in aligned or in, in alignment ever, it doesn't mean that, you know, we I still know have that, moments. Yeah. Absolutely. And I know how, you know, I, I, I manage that very well, but I think of Fred Rogers and I think of, you know, you just kind of look for the helpers. And, and we, we all have them. Yes, they're in everywhere. Our life. Yeah. Yes. But we get and distracted. We yeah, no, but I think building a support network around us is, you know, each person should have their core three, you know, yes. people. I know you've Absolutely. got your Claire Bear and yes, I have my Claire Bear. She is husband. so incredible. Yes. And oh. you know, and I and I have myself. Mm -hmm. And I forgot that for so long. You know, I had to, I gotta tell you, Jen, the greatest thing that I ever did was all that love that I pour into other people, and all the love that I pour into my students, my kids, my partner, mm -hmm. I, um, I equally pour that love into myself now. Mm -hmm. And it has done wonders for my mental health. I've only recently started to realize the power of yes. self-love. Like I took Listen, myself shopping yes. on Sunday. Come on now. Just for self-care Sunday. I'm like, I'm going out by myself and I'm going to have three hours of shopping and having fun, like shopping for, you know, deals and whatever. And, yeah. and I just, you know, we don't do that enough for ourselves and it's really important. We don't. And also like other things, like the grace I give to other people, why am I not showing myself that True. same grace? You know, the way I show up for other people and pour into them, why would I not pour that into mm -hmm. myself? And so I think a, a lot of, a lot of people, um, I don't want to say that I don't want to misspeak, but I feel genuinely opinion, not fact, but I feel that a lot of times some of us with mental health issues is because we feel so deeply. Mm -hmm. We feel about the things in the world. I, what I can speak on factually is empaths. So as an empath, I think I'm an I, empath too. Yes. As an empath, I can factually say that so many of my mental health issues came from not being able to save the world. And that, it, that sounds crazy, right? It sounds like 
what do you mean? Of course you can't save the world. But when you feel as deeply as I do, and you, there's a lot of us, right? There's a lot of people who feel this deeply, who care about things that don't just impact our lives, but impact other lives, so the lives of children, the lives of women, the lives of black people. Oh my gosh, what's happening in Afghanistan? Mm-hmm. Oh my goodness. And then all of a sudden you're up at night and the body keeps score and there's all yes. these things. But um, I think that a lot of uh, us feelers have mental health issues um, and it definitely plays a role. Is, be, is because we don't understand that by saving ourselves, pouring into ourselves, we are actually helping the world. Mm-hmm. So when we take that power back, like we have to learn how to observe and not absorb. And it's, mm-hmm. it's difficult, right? Mm-hmm. But for me, that was the life altering turning point for me was saying, Hey, Danielle, when you love yourself so hard that it starts to seep through every cell and all of a sudden it's pouring out to everyone Mm -hmm. that you really are like, I, like you really are making a difference. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, and just to, just to be clear, like I learned this from taking my power back, from being on that stage, from doing all those things, you know? And so like, I sit here today with you, Jen, and you've seen many versions of me and you've known me as a couple different names and multiple things. And I got to tell you, like, I am, I've never been more safe, more grounded, more in alignment than I've ever been, than I am right now. And I am just so grateful. And I know that it's because I poured into myself, right? Like I, I poured into myself. And now as a result, I have so much more to give. Mm-hmm. And I it's love so, that. Amazing. so amazing. I want to know about how you did this career transition into yes. teaching. Will you share more about that with us? Yeah, I'd love to. So basically, um, after working in media for 15 years and really just, all I knew was I wanted to help people. Mm-hmm. And so when I finished media, you know, I was like, how can I help? How can I help? That's actually how I wound up at this is my brain because I just mm-hmm. knew I had to help and I didn't know how to do it. Now I'll be very clear what I learned before. So I was diagnosed with ADHD, but this was after my time at this is my brain. And because I had never worked like a real job that needed like executive functioning skills, I struggled. Like I was like, what? I mean, it was, you know, the actual, we were a little disorganized back then too. So it's, I don't know. Blame- it's okay, but I, I learned a lot about myself, right? And I was like, okay, well, what I, I want to help people, but how do I do that? And so um, I, I went back to school. I got certified as an educator. I taught seventh grade. I've, I've taught first grade, fourth grade. And this coming up here, I'm teaching eighth grade English. Oh and I am gosh. so excited. And I want to be very clear. My room is a safe haven. It is full of positivity and mental health, mm-hmm. everything, like these kids will know how to advocate, like literally the, the theme of the year is advocate for yourself. I love it. Every, I had parent teacher meetings today and, you know, parents were coming in there. Like, I'm like, what do you need from me? And I told them that I said, this is what I need from parents and from students. I said, I need you to understand your power. And when you advocate for something, I may not have it right then. I may not even know how to get it, but because you advocated, I promise you I'll try. Mm. And I said, I can't read your mind. You are powerful. And the only way you're going to get what you want is if you ask for it and you advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I promise you when these eighth graders graduate this year and they go on to high school, if I have taught them nothing else, they will know how to advocate for themselves. And that was the only way I've been able to teach that is because I poured into myself and I learned to advocate for myself. And now Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, I got to teach the babies, you know? kind of just been this beautiful journey and now I'm I'm teaching and I'm doing the podcast and I'm using my voice in mm-hmm. the best way possible right I took mm-hmm. my power back from feeling used and abused in media and now, now I I help humans every week and I'm growing brains every single day mm-hmm. and I'm writing stories that matter and I'm my storytelling is saving lives and I've literally stepped into my power and I'm like oh my gosh this is it like this is how we change everything and so I'm just, I'm excited and I'm so happy to be here with you, Jen. And I just, I'm so grateful for my experiences, all of them, all of them with This Is My Brave. I, I've had many, you know, and This Is My Brave absolutely changed my life. It is mm. something that I will always hold. I, you could ask me 20 years from now to hop on a call with you to talk about This Is My Brave and I will remember what it felt because I, I remember things and feelings. Mm-hmm. 
And so all you have to do is like say the word and I know how it made me feel. Mm -hmm. And that's something you can't ever forget. And so I'm just so, I'm so grateful, so grateful. Like literally I'm so grateful. And, um, and the work you're doing and the work that anybody who's ever stepped on a, this is my brave stage is doing is life saving and life changing, like for those of us in it and for the people who witness it. So, well, like I said, you are one of the builders, you know, of this movement of this organization. And I'm just so grateful for our friendship and for how many years we've known each other. I wish we've you know, it's, it's hard to stay in touch because we're all so busy, but like yes. every time we get to connect, I just appreciate the time we get to have together and the catching up. So, um, so we need to link everything in the notes. We're going to link help a human out. We're going to yes. link your book. Um, we're, what else do we need to link anything? Your performances on the brave stages. Yes, yes, yes. And my Instagram. Yes. 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 All Everyone of it. needs all the to things. follow Yours, tell us your handle. It's Ms. Yeah, Ms. Danielle Ferentino. So just at Ms. Danielle Ferentino, spelled exactly like it sounds, and you can find everything, everything there. And it's literally free resources of anti-racism and activism and advocacy and education. Like it's a safe space for everybody. And if it's not, you will quickly get blocked with love. Mm-hmm. But I am cultivating safety and boundaries. So it's a good place and everybody is welcome. I love it. Danielle, thank you so much for spending this time with us and for your involvement and um, dedication to This Is My Brave. We love you. And I love you. you. I love you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up. Thank you to our sponsors, Abby, Alkermes, BetterHelp, Jansen, the Nathan Cummings Foundation, Sage Therapeutics, and Synovian for making Brave Beyond the Stage possible. So thanks again, Danielle. No problem. Bye.